In the midst of fertile farmlands in Bavaria, southern Germany, lies the old town of Nördlingen. It is a town of tradition. Hourly from dark till dawn, the Nachtwächter, the night watchman in the steeple of St. George's Church, sings out his password. And when it is answered from the town hall down below, it means that all is well. The view the watchman has today differs little from that of his predecessors three or four hundred years ago. The town huddled around old Daniel, as the Nerdlingers call their main church, and enclosed by the same medieval defense walls. Even the houses have changed little. Although some date back to the Thirty Years' War in the 17th century, or even longer, people still live in them. The fortified walls and the towers are almost 600 years old. They served a useful purpose in the days when Nördlingen was important as Freistadt, a free imperial city. Today, it is just a quiet country town. In Tanner Street, where that trade once prospered, there is only one tannery left in operation, and that may close soon for lack of demand. Today, Nördlingen is more important as a market town. Once a month, the farmers from the surrounding country bring in the cattle they wish to sell. The animals are tied to bars set up on a wide street, and the traders walk around and make their appraisals and offers. When a sale is completed, all concerned combine efforts to get the animal onto the buyer's truck. The monthly hog sale is held in the market square. Buyers check pigs for liveliness as a sign of health. They will buy them by the litter or in small lots and make their offers accordingly. There are still old timers in their traditional garb to be seen. They like to watch the bargaining and the longer it takes, the better. They say a true Bavarian farmer doesn't budge. And before taking a penny less, he would rather carry his pigs back home. <laughs> the country around Nördlingen is a wide, shallow basin with well-tended fields, rimmed by gentle hills and dotted with small villages where the farmers live. This is the village of Holheim. It has a population of 300. The typical farm dwelling is built around a yard with a small duck pond. In the center is the manure pile. Barns are attached to the living area. This is farmer Eberhardt. His big watchdog, Rex, has been guarding the farm all night. During the day, he stays locked in his kennel because he likes to roam around. Life on the farm runs on a strict schedule. Even the ducks seem to know when their feeding time is at hand. After Farmer Eberhardt has opened the gate, he will look after his cattle. In the meantime, his wife feeds the ducks and the chickens and gets the two children ready for school. The village of Hoheim is much too small to have a school of its own, so Reiner Eberhardt and his friend Helmut must go to another, larger village, three miles away, where there is a rural school. Another boy, Walter, joins them on the way. Often, after a heavy rain, they are slowed down by muddy roads, but they still prefer bicycles to walking. Of course, in winter, they must hike. There are two classrooms in this schoolhouse, one for pupils six to 10 years of age, the other where Reiner and his friends go for those 11 to 14. Their teacher, Herr Zimmermann, places great value upon the development of memory. Polgelernt is nie vergessen. Well memorized is never forgotten, he says. And if his pupils learn to recite long poems, 
they will be able to keep other subjects, such as history dates, in their heads as well. Herr Zimmermann doesn't even mind a little quiet prompting, as long as they all do their best. While the children plow through their poems, their parents plow through the fields. Farmer Eberhardt and his wife prepare the ground for seed potatoes. Helmut's parents are planting a field to wheat. In Germany, the farm woman must help her husband in the field more than ever because hired hands are hard to find. Horses and cattle are still commonly used to pull farm implements and tractors are still rare because many small farmers can't afford them. This farmer works alone, seeding his potatoes. It is a slow process. One by one, they must be tossed and then pressed into the ground. The Eberharts have more acreage and have hired some women to speed the work. Even the children join them after school, and they like it. They can't learn it early enough. They'll have to do their homework after supper. Other children have to work much harder. Spreading manure with a heavy fork for a couple of hours is a hard task for this boy, but his father works at something else, and this is important and must be done too, and it's for him to do it, so he does it. Everyone must work. Only the very aged may rest and watch the summer come. Harvest time starts a new round of work, late in summer. In the apple orchards, Ladders are propped against heavy branches, and everybody gets busy. The children consider it a lot of fun, at least the first day. Who wouldn't like to pick apples right from the tree? Their parents are used to it. They have done it for many years. But even for them, the first day of the harvest means something special. Now they begin to see a reward for the season's labor. If the weather stays reasonably dry until the whole crop is in, they can hope for a good market. Some small farmers grow certain field crops just for their own needs and to fill small local demand. Harvesting beets in this manner may not seem very efficient, but it is a task an elderly person can still usefully perform. After all, a cartload a day is all that is needed. Speed is not so important. It is different with farmer Eberhardt, who owns 50 acres, a large farm for Germany. His 30-acre potato crop must be dug up quickly when the market is just right, so a harvester is a good investment. The dried cuttings have been piled up to be burned. Then, with the smoke from many little fires drifting across the field, the Eberhardts and their helpers gather the dug-up potatoes into baskets and buckets. There will be a ready market for them. The average German consumes 360 pounds of potatoes a year. One woman has brought her small boy, who learns what to do by watching Reiner for a while. When the baskets are full, they are dumped onto a trailer that will take them to the farmhouse. Even with the crop all gathered, the job is not finished. The field must be raked clean, so it will be ready for recultivation. The fires will burn for some time yet, but nothing must be left for tomorrow. Tomorrow it might rain. The potatoes have been weighed and put into sacks at the farmhouse. The next day they are taken to the farm cooperative office in Nördlingen, where they are checked and Herr Eberhardt receives proper credit, and with it he may purchase supplies or he can take the cash. Now that fall is here and the weather quite unstable, the farmer must be on guard. Mature crops must be brought in before they can be damaged by a sudden rainstorm. A good supply of feed for the cattle has been cut. It must be under the roof before the day is over. Left in the field overnight, it might get wet and rot. 
Rex has been waiting for his master. He knows he will get some attention now. Herr Eberhardt always has a few moments for his dog when he comes home. The women drag the cart with the corn into the barn. The day's work is over. Rex has been let out of the kennel and has found some milk, uh, the cat's milk, that is. But the cat doesn't mind. They're on friendly terms. Herr Eberhardt has received official plaques attesting to the good health of his cattle. This is important, for now he may freely send them to the market in Nordlingen for sale. The whole region had been under quarantine the two previous years when some cattle were found to be diseased. But now that this is over, trade is brisk because of higher local demand. The hog market is doing well too. The Germans are prosperous and they spend more than a third of their earnings on food. Thus, more money gets into the hands of the farmer. It is supper time at the Eberhards. Ruth and Reiner help their mother set the table. Their food is simple but plentiful and it is all from their own farm. The tomatoes and the smoke cured ham, the sausage patties and the pickles, Reiner's favorite. Only the bread was bought because there is no time for baking bread. The place settings are simple a small wooden serving board, and a knife for each person. Every morsel of food is carefully cut and thoroughly savored. If Reiner would only stop eating so many pickles, his grandmother just smiles. She is contented. Her daughter has a nice family. Life is good to them. Yes, for the Eberhards, all is well. <laughs>